Good morning and welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Today, my guest is Tiffany Willis. Hi. She is Director of Events and Children's Initiatives with the Ballot Health Foundation. Thank you for joining yeah, me. Thank you for having me. And well, this is your second time with me. You were here last year yes. because we have a certain situation. It's called the Radiothon. <laughs> <laughs> so I should say event. Yes. So we have a certain event that we're both very involved mm -hmm. with. Yes. And that's coming up shortly. Mm -hmm. February 21st, 22nd. Yes, yeah. that's coming up quick. Mm -hmm. And it's a very near and dear event. Tell mm -hmm. us about it. Yes, and um, we're so thankful for Holston Valley and Broadcasting for doing this. And Linda, she's our DJ, so she does a great job. Yes, Steve and I Steve, MC yes. it every year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they do a great job. So thank you for, for doing that and couldn't do it without you all. So I want to say a thank you. But it is. It's a great event. Raises a lot of money. And we couldn't do it without our sponsors and our community. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today is getting the community involved and how you can get involved and how to donate. So Great. it all benefits, um, it's called Nice Walker Children's Hospital Radiothon because mm -hmm. it benefits Nice Walker Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. So 100% goes back to, to the needs and there's a specific need um, within the walls of Nice Walker that we're really focusing on this year that the event will, will help benefit and it's called the Child Life Program. For those that aren't real familiar with the Nice Walker Children's mm -hmm. Hospital, explain the history behind it a little bit. Um, when did it start? who benefits from it? Mm -hmm. Well, we're actually getting ready, ready to celebrate our 10th anniversary of Nice Wonker being, being wow. built. I can't believe it's been 10 years. I know. We're celebrating March 15th. 10 so years. 10 years. Yep. Of helping children in of our helping, region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we serve 29 counties, about 200,000 children a year, all the way to Kentucky. So very, very um, wide range. Um, different counties. Like I said, 29 counties total that we serve. It's a 69 bed unit, NICU, PICU. We now have, um, well, we've had emergency room um, there at Nicewanger as well that we serve as well, but an outpatient, any kind of surgery. And we're so fortunate that we have a lot of specialists there mm -hmm. in, in, in Nicewanger because it prevents them going to Knoxville or Nashville. And then we also have St. Jude's affiliate Right. So that we can treat certain cancers. And that also prevents children from being separated from their siblings or another parent, mm -hmm. that they're able to treat certain cancers there at, at Nicewanger. And that's so. amazing because St. Jude's, it, it's paid for. Right. So children in this region or the 29 county region mm -hmm. can get help there without having to drive all the way to Memphis. Yes. So it doesn't separate families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that goes the same with our specialists there. You know, endocrinology, neurology. You know, mm -hmm. we're we're lucky that we have those doctors, those specialty doctors that can treat that. And every year, that's that's you know why the, these events are so important mm -hmm. because you know we're we're so fortunate to have the hospital anyway. Yes. But then when we can, you know, recruit and get these great specialties that the children needs, it prevents them again from going um, to another city and far away. I've said this once, I've said this a thousand times, we are very blessed to have Nice Wonger Children's Hospital in our region mm -hmm. yes. to help all these area children. And mm -hmm. the stories I hear over and over again are it keeps families together mm -hmm. because the families still have to work. Even when you have a sick child, yeah. you have to continue to work. Right. And if you have to take that time off from work and drive all the way mm -hmm. to wherever, right. usually days away, then it's very difficult for the family mm -hmm. to be able to have that support for their child. Right. And it's heartbreaking to be mm -hmm. separated from your child when they're and sick. And that too, but um, a lot of these families have siblings. Yes. So a mom has to, or mom or dad has to go to the child to another city and the other parent has to stay with the brother and sister. It is such a hardship. So it's all, you know, it's, they're broken away that way, separated for months. So this way, you know, they can all be together. Mm -hmm. And you made a good point about, it's our region's hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's located in Johnson City, but we do serve 29 mm -hmm. counties. It is our region's children's hospital. Mm -hmm. You can have a family member in, you know, Mountain City or all the way to Kentucky. And they mm -hmm. will come to to Nicewanger, and mm -hmm. like I said it's it's still closer than having so to go. So much closer. Like I said it's um, 
It's a blessing. Just, we are. We're very blessed to have it. Very. Absolutely. Now this year, the Radiothon is spotlighting the Child Life Specialist Department. Yes. Yes. And what is that exactly? So it's basically, it's non-clinical. They have a staff of five and they're basically there to make the child's experience more pleasant. Mm -hmm. They work with, um, it's child's working through play um, and they're all, you know, trained and certified and they do, you know, in psychology, but um, they're basically there, what the doctors can do clinically, they're there for emotional support. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so an example, you know, um, if a child has to have a CT scan, they have a little um, model CT, you know, toy CT scan and they'll grab Spider-Man and bring it and show little, little Joe or whatever his name is, <laughs> you know, this is what's going to happen. It's getting a, he's going to get a picture and Spider-Man's going to go through and just take a picture of him and they kind of show what the process is going to be like. So hopefully it's less scary mm -hmm. when he has to go for this actual procedure. And there's, they just hired a, um, a child life specialist for the emergency room because I can speak up. My daughter was there last year oh, really? and had to have, um, she ended up having pneumonia, mm. um, but had to be hospitalized afterwards. But they put an IV in her in, in the ER and talk about, you know, traumatizing scary. for a, she was two at the time mm -hmm. and you know if child life was there it would have been a different experience I mean mm -hmm. they did a great job anyways but you know they kind of show them what it's going to be like and use the numbing and you know but the child life does not do any kind of they're not given the shots or any of the clinical but they're, they're not there. medical they're not medical right but they do kind of you know get them prepared to mm -hmm. what's going to happen and or or even you know if father have an IV they can be there to distract them mm -hmm. you know so they're not realizing what's even going on over here I think so. of child life specialists as loving caring people that are holding your hand and making what you're going through less threatening mm -hmm. safer mm -hmm. more comfortable right because i mean some of these kids especially the, the more severe that have to have infusions you know mm -hmm. two or three days a week mm -hmm. you know to have that child life specialist there to to not be as scary or to distract them like i said it just makes the whole experience totally different and also they've got one now for outpatient procedures because you think you know having tonsillectomies mm -hmm. all the time for little kids and mm -hmm. they use this procedure or even after tonsillectomy it's called PO to go that can kind of help them it's a technique that kind of helps them start drinking and eating because that's the only way they'll, they'll send them home is if they're starting to eat or yes. drink um, adequate amounts so that's where child life steps in and gets them to start eating and drinking so they go home sooner um, but even before a procedure or an outpatient procedure, they're there, you know, to, to explain um, what's going to happen and, um, and just make it, like I said, they're there just to make their whole experience less traumatizing, less traumatizing. <laughs> easier. Yeah. And even if, you know, they're in the, in the inpatient, mm -hmm. you know, they'll come by a couple of days after they really work closely with the doctors and what the patient's going through and, um, just bring them a tea set or a toy and it's amazing they said you know how much different they can be in such a you know qu they get quiet or just not mm -hmm. feeling good but here comes this um, child life specialist in with a, a brand new baby doll or toy mm -hmm. set and just, they just said the look on their face and how they changed just from having some toys there and for know. some of the patients that have to come like you were saying, ongoing for treatments two and three times a week, they become friends. Right. And I was talking to one of the patients and she was saying that she's got her favorites or she's got mm -hmm. ones that she looks forward to because they're, like you said, they're assigned to different yes, areas. Yes. And she said, I just look so forward to coming so I can spend time mm -hmm. with, you know, her right. child life specialist. Yeah. So they really have to be loving and caring for mm -hmm. when your child is looking forward to going to the hospital so they can see their yeah. friend. They are yeah. definitely special people. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are, and and they've got they're strong. I always admire. I'm like, I cannot do that. I just, you know, to see what they're, what these childs every day they're they're what they're going through and seeing how strong and brave they are. As an adult, I don't think I would have that attitude. So, know. you know, they're witnessing that every day, and so you kind of, you know, realize 
their how important their role is, and um, you know leadership realizes. I mean, a, a lot of hospitals have this program, um, but they want to sustain it, and they they only have five. Mm -hmm. So the statistics show they need one per fifteen child. Okay. And um, in the in the PICU alone, that's the PICU. They, it's twenty six beds. So mm. no, it's not the PICU. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking. The NICU maybe. Um, Maybe the NICU, but um, but just, that's a lot yes, of babies. Twenty six. That one one of the person, one of the child life has. So they wow. they need more, um, you know. But what yes. they do is amazing, and and th they need tools. That's where this where this money is coming. They need tools to supply. They also have, um, you know, the worst part of their job is when a child passes away. So they have mm. bereavement, you know. Yes, it's going to be hard. Hand print so they can send the mom, and every year they'll do an anniversary and up to five years. So. Oh my! I didn't realize mm -hmm. that. And then all the little, so we can talk a little bit about their wish list that they have for the radiothon. Yes. So one thing that I feel like it's important to tell um, the listeners and and the viewers today is, you know, one thing that we don't realize for MRI or CT scans is children. You know, especially the MRI, they have to lay still for 45 minutes. You know what? That is unbelievable to me to, to ask a little kid, like mm -hmm. a four-year-old, to lay still for 45 minutes. Yes. But we'll talk a little bit more about sure. that. We're going to take a break right now, and then when we come back, let's talk about the needs mm -hmm. for the child life specialists and why we're raising the money for the Radiothon. So we'll be back in just a minute after a message from our very important sponsors with more with Tiffany Willis.